I, Mushebu Muhammad Alpha, swear by Almighty God, swear by Almighty God, that the evidence I shall give before this committee, that the evidence I shall give before this committee, touching the matter in issue, touching the matter in issue, shall be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Honorable nominee, you are welcome. On behalf of this committee, I'd like to congratulate you on your nomination by His Excellency the President to the position of Deputy Minister Designate. We'll take you through uh, the process, first your CV and then Article 94 of the Constitution, and then the main substance, that's where you're going to, national issues, etc. Thank you. Honorable Harun Idrusu will set the ball rolling. Dr. Alpha, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May we examine the very first page of your CV? Till end, University of Ghana, question mark. What happened? Well, um, those two years were some of the most turbulent years of university education in this country. The university was closed for more than a year. And within that period, I had, a I had a scholarship to go outside and study. So I just left for, to pursue my studies outside the country. So you did not obtain anything now, from that is why I left it. That is but why you I have evidence it. of record of study in that university. Oh, yes. It can be, it can be checked. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Alpha. Would you want to expand on Veterinary sanitation, what does it entail? Where you have your PhD in? Um, veterinary sanitation is an aspect of veterinary medicine, and it is the borderline between veterinary medicine and then human medicine. It's a public health option, and I opted to pursue my PhD in that area. And if you go through my work life, you, you will see that I wasn't just working with the mainstream veterinary services. All the agencies that I work with are public health or trade-related agencies. Thank you. Can we go to page four? Page four of your CV. You are house prefect for <coughs> Volta House. Is yes, Mr. Chairman. It's a male house. In Navrongo, Volta House is a male house. Folio number, you want to share it with us? My folio number, Mr. Chairman, is 3264. Which year? From 79 to 81. You realize that I have added three years. That was because upon completion of the apostles, I wasn't very comfortable with one of the subjects. And uh, I had permission from the headmaster to come back, stay in the school, and rewrite that particular subject. So that's why I indicated from... 79 to 81. Yeah. Your national service in page two, very brief. Ghana Standards Authority, March to October. Was that the case or for some reason? Oh, no, that was exactly the case. As you rightly said on page one, I didn't finish Legon here. If I had finished, I would have done national service. And because I had a long sojourn outside, because I was outside cumulatively for 10 years, Upon return, even though I had attained the age of 34, I still felt that there was a need for me to do national service. And I applied and I was posted to Ghana Standards Board. Then board, now it's an authority uh, to do my service there. And that was exactly what I did. Yes. You indicate in your CV you work with the Food and Drugs Board. Is it a likelihood that you may relinquish that office? Mr. Chairman, I would like clarification on this question. I, I, don't, I don't understand it very well. Assuming that you get Parliament's approval as Deputy Minister of the Republic of Ghana, I am not too sure you'll be able to serve in the dual capacity. Would you relinquish that office? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would do that, even though I love the work that I, I was doing there. But I think this is a higher challenge, and those who know me know that I love challenges. I will do that. Maybe to assist you, or you want to go on a long leave, so that in the event that you are asked to go on political vacation, you would go back to a job you cherish. 
Mr. Chairman, I'm sure of myself. I know my capacity. I'm very confident, and I'm entering this new life with commitment and confidence. I know I will go higher than here. Chairman, just a final bit on the CV. Jamal is here to support me. You love reading religious literature. Is it the Fatihas and uh, Surat and Mariam's or your own uh, way of re reading the literature? Which of them? Um, first of all, it is a holy book. And as you are aware, I'm a devoted Muslim. I make sure that my Holy Quran is my companion every day. I read it in the morning before I come out, and I read it in the evening before I go to sleep. It's just a duty. It has become part of me. Secondly, any literature at all, whether it is Islamic or not Islamic, for instance, I do read the Jehovah Witness. They are books. I'm a subscriber. They bring them to me. I read them. I love them. I enjoy them because there are a lot of useful things in there. So anything religious, anything that will bring me closer to God Almighty, I love doing it, and I drive joy from it. Chairman, my final. You are a member of the National Executive Committee of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission. What do you do in that role? Well, as you know, this is a religious organization. We are one of the denominations of Islam, and we do believe that Islam is supposed to make a human being, if not perfect, but near to perfection, uh, but being as we are, humans, people can still err, uh, and it needs strong and coordinated leadership. That is how come we have this council, and I'm very grateful to Allah that they saw me worthy enough to be a member of that council. Thank you. Chairman, may I now request that, should this committee require evidence of you honoring your tax obligations to the state by way of a tax certificate, can we have that? Not as I'm sitting here, because I have been told that the information will be sent to Parliament. That's what I was told last Friday, and that I will have the certificate today. You've traveled extensively. Do you owe allegiance to any other state other than the Republic of Ghana? I owe allegiance, Mr. Chairman, only to the Republic of Ghana. Since you deal with veterinary sanitation, you deal with sanity of minds of... Uh, Animals? Mr. Chairman, my work is not actually on animals. My work is on the products that are derived from animals and are used as food sources. So I deal with products and not with the animals themselves. Thank you. Honorable Baba Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And let me also. Mr. Chairman, the nominee has uh, indicated that he's a, devout, he's a devout Muslim. And uh, page one of his CV, marital status, he said, married with three children. He specified the number of children, but the number of wives he didn't specify. I want to know the level at which he is operating. 25% capacity, 50%, 75%, or 100%. I want you to know which capacity you are operating as a Muslim? Um, Mr. Chairman, as I sit here, I believe that I'm operating at 100%. So you what? have four wives? No. Oh, no. Okay. Because I do know that the four wives is not a compulsory matter. <laughs> it's something, it's optional. So I believe that from where I sit, I believe that I'm operating at 100%. With how many wives? One. Okay, so you are going to operate with one wife. Okay. Uh, next one is on page five. As one of your hobbies, you say, listening to political discussions. But I've gone through your CV. I've not seen you related to any political work. But I know you because I've had the opportunity to work with you in some forums, notably the Youth Forum in 2001 to 2004. I know you have done some political work. Can you let us in on some political work? Or why did you, because you are speaking under oath, why did you leave them out? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it was just a personal decision that I took. Um, as I was appearing here, I knew that some of you know that I have a political life. 
I have done some work, as you rightly said, together with you and the Honorable Haruna and others. Um, my political career uh, became a bit dull beginning 2004 when I found myself in another environment where it is not permissible to be a public servant and be doing politics. So I was only just being compliant to the laws of the country. That is just all about it. I could no more go on radio and talk as I used to do. I couldn't go to forums and talk, and I couldn't go on campaign trail. So that's just the only reason. OK, finally, your wife is here. I should believe so. I know ah, she's okay. supposed to be here. So, yes. And so you have stated well that at one wife you are 100% capacity. <laughs> she's listening. Honorable <laughs> Kujito. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations, Dr. Mohamed Alpha. Uh, I noticed from your CV that you didn't indicate your place of death. Well, can you be kind to let the committee have that information? Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I am a Wala, and I was born in Wa. I thought I indicated it. Our hometown, okay. But I was born in Wa. <coughs> no, you didn't indicate it. Okay, I was yeah. born in Wa. Uh, I, I like the way you are emphasizing WA, since you know my links to WA. Exactly. exactly. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, that would not stop me from proving further. Uh, I, I notice also that you take a lot of interest in uh, uh, genetic modified foods. Uh, I would want, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, if the nominee can share his thoughts on it. and. Uh, the, um, and also address the anxiety that some people have about uh, GM foods. And then, Mr. Chairman, finally, the nominee says he speaks Russian. I would want to know, just by education, uh, how the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation will be said in Russian, though I wouldn't know whether it's right or wrong, but we can find out later. Thanks, thank, Mr. You, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I will start with the second one. In Russian, that ministry will be known as Ministerstva Nauki Technology e Innovasi. That is how it will be known. Now, with regards to the first question, yes, indeed, I was among the pioneers that were called upon by the government then and given several forms of training in biotechnology. I had to be in Hungary for one month, uh, 12 years ago. I had to be in Namibia for a month, no, for a week, and I had to be in South Africa as well, all because of genetically modified foods. This is because, as you are aware, this is a new area of science, and uh, we are part of the global world. We cannot just say that we are an island, and do we like it or we don't like it at some point in time? will have to deal with genetically modified food. So I thought that it was a good decision that government took to train people in this area. So I, I am an analyst in that area. I'm a communicator in that area. And that's the more reason why when the Food and Drugs Board decided to set up a new department called Animal Products and Biosafety Department, I was called upon to relinquish my position as the head of the Food Inspector Department and take on this new role and I can tell you that uh, under my uh, leadership, we've been able to train a lot of people in the Food and Drugs Authority who can capably handle any issues regarding genetically modified foods, where we as a state to decide today to import them into our country. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Honorable Alfred Agwisi. Yes. To an earlier question, you say that the information on the payment of tax, your payment of tax, will be sent to Parliament. Now, payment of tax is one of the vital things, one of the conditions which, based upon which you can become a minister. Now, which information are you saying will be sent to Parliament? The idea that you have paid, or you have made satisfactory arrangement, or for that matter, you have not paid. What is it that will be sent to Parliament? Mr. Chairman, you would have realized that all my life I have been a public servant. So one assumes that all your taxes are deducted at source because every month I receive my pay, I see that there is a place for income tax. When I was supposed to come for vetting per the directive 
I, like all other designates, also visited the tax office. And to my surprise, I got to realize that there were some outstandings. I wanted to know what is the issue, since I don't do business and I'm a government employee. I was explained to, which is not their fault, it's not my fault, it should be a fault coming from somewhere, and we put in place a workable arrangement so that these can be handled. And I was cleared and told that the one who was supposed to sign my certificate was not available at that time, but they will give due information to Parliament, and I could go and face the vetting committee confidently. That's what I was told. Thank you. Can you, when you receive it, finish this committee with, with it? I would gladly do that, sir. Yes, Honorable Dr. Alasan, any questions? On the CV? CV, no? Okay, then let's start with the main matter, Dr. Alasan. Uh, thank you very much. I feel very much at home since I have uh, a scientist colleague uh, on the hot seat. I, I've, I've seen that your CV is extremely rich on various, but my questions are meant, meant for you to take advantage of this platform to explain certain very difficult to understand concepts uh, for the general population to benefit. Uh, since science is very, very thin on PR, maybe this is a platform <laughs> to do so for free. I noticed that uh, the issue of uh, risk assessment on GM foods is something that you are very conversant with. I just wanted to know whether really there's any risk at all uh, with the consumption of GM foods as scientific evidence have it as of today. Uh, my second question is on just for in two lines to state the practical outcomes of biotech and nuclear agri-research. How practical can it be in its application to agriculture and agricultural products? And the last one is about sterile insect technique and how it can be useful to uh, raising our agricultural profile much higher. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with respect to the first question, uh, there is nothing in life that has no risk at all attached to it. Everything has some element of risk attached to it. But let me start by saying that the FAO, the WHO, and the OECD have all clearly stated that genetically modified foods are no less safe than conventional foods. Be it as it may, human beings, anything new, they raise questions about it. So it, 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 it is just in the interest of scientists themselves to reassure the public that indeed these products are safe. That is how come this idea about risk assessment came about. I've always asked the question when I'm giving lectures on this topic. I ask that the rice we are all consuming today is not because somebody did risk assessment on it. It's just because we are aware that our great-great-grandfathers ate rice and they never died our great-grandfathers ate, our fathers ate, and we are also eating it, that is all. In the case of risk assessment, because of the concerns, some perceived ones, some you just look at them, they are even nonsensical, scientists still feel that there is a need, since this is food that is going to go into the person's organism, there is a need for us to give double reassurance to the consumer that this food indeed is as safe as the conventional food. That is just the whole idea behind the risk assessment, not because we feel that there's something particularly wrong with it. Thank you. Now, on the second uh, question, Mr. Chairman, if you can repeat it again. A nuclear agric. Yeah, very good. And its practical application. Yes, right? exactly. Um, well, we've all conversant. We are all conversant with the fact that uh, our agriculture production, in part, is not as we want it because of diseases and then pest infestation. Now, with nuclear agriculture and biotechnology, it's possible for us to produce clean planting materials for farmers, disease-free planting materials for farmers, and that's a practical step. Another one is where we can irradiate food to prolong the shelf life of the food. We are all grappling with the situation of rotten tomatoes 
rotten yam before you carry it from the north down to the south, the yam is rotten. This country has the technology and the capacity to, to, to stop this, and that capacity is with the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. And it is important we let the public know this. All we need to do is just to empower them more in terms of resources, equipment, and then human resources so that they can do the job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Stera Insect Technique. Stera Insect Technique. Now the last one. Technology. I don't know how human beings, I mean, how the common man will understand it, but I'll do my best. Uh, well, we, it's just a way of making the meal, let me use this word, impotent. So that even though the meal meets, there's not going to be progeny. And uh, scientists feel that if we can do this, we will drastically reduce the, the population of the church fly in our situation over a period of time, say five or 10 years time. I do know that the time I was with the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, this program was going on. And I'm, I'm aware that it is now even in a, in a new phase and they are collaborating with the Veterinary Services Directorate to let it have a practical impact on our livestock production in the country. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about the church. And also, I think that the, the, I saw on your CV a training on the trial, uh, sterile insect on the church, and then also trypanosomosis management. There's a similar one on uh, uh, this uh, malaria. I want to know whether that is also visible and how can that impact what uh, uh, the problem we're going through with malaria in Ghana? Yes, mosquitoes. Yes, mosquitoes. Yeah. I was missing the word. There's a similar one on mosquitoes. So how, how can we do it? Thank you, For Mr. your information, Chairman. I was yeah. a science student yeah. in yeah. Laboni yeah. Secondary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's, it's, it's basically the same principle. It's basically the same principle, allowing the male to enjoy without producing progeny. That is all about it. But unlike in the first case, the mosquito one is a public health one. It's concerning human beings to reduce malaria. The first one is to reduce trypanosomiasis in animals. That is all about it. But it's the same principle. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Honorable Harun Idris. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity. My is to congratulate the honorable nominee. I have known him personally, very diligent at what he chooses to do. I'm sure many will be wondering where the president uh, recognized him from. Mr. Chairman, having worked as national youth organizer, I recall with Baba Jamal, and uh, Muhaydin Osman, some of the struggles in getting our party to respond to very challenging times in 2001. I have no doubt in your capacity supported by Kamal and Co. I only can wish you well in your new, new portfolio. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable uh, Afrida Bwisi. Yes, I, I also wish you well. Uh, I have gone through your CV. Uh, the conferences and meetings attended. I have noticed that you attended one, two, three, four sessions. The 16th session, the 18th session, the 19th session, and the 20th session. Codex Committee on Residues of Veterinary Drugs in Foods. From that meeting, from those meetings, I, I want to believe that that topic which was treated continuously, is very vital for our understanding. Uh, residues of veterinary drugs in foods, I would like you to explain to me that the veterinary drugs that were, were administered to, to maybe animals or, or on foods, they have some residue. And what is the effect of those residues to we, the, the consumers? Number two. Number two, and uh, 
you say that you, your, your hobby, one of them is listening to political discussions. Uh, of late, in, in, in the mornings, morning shows, they bring um, two panelists for discussion, normally on political issues. And uh, I don't know whether those are the things you like listening to. The discussions are, are generating into such a point that uh, it's not the best to listen to. And concerns have been raised whether these things should not be stopped at all. What is your take on that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first one, veterinary drug residues. Yes, Honorable, you are right on the point. When we use medicines on animals and we do not observe the withdrawal period, the withdrawal period here being that there is a time period between the usage of the medicine on the animal and the time you can consume any food derived from the animal. If you do not observe that, or if you abuse the usage of the medicine on the animal, then you are most likely to have residues of either the metabolites or the drug itself in either the muzzle or the milk or the egg, in which case, if it is the chicken, or the egg. And if you consume this over a time, that could have health implication on you. Having realized this, the WHO and the FAO jointly set up codex to be setting international standards for several other things, including veterinary drug residues in foods. And this meeting is held annually, uh, is held every 18 months. All countries send representatives, and it so happens that I am always the representative from Ghana to attend this meeting. The question is, what do we do there? As a developing country, you would agree with me that largely we import our meat from outside. We produce some meat, but much of it is being imported. Meat, chicken, fish, we import them. And it is in our interest to participate in setting those international standards that will set that will serve as guidelines, guideposts, for the presence or absence of these residues in these products. That is why we participate, and it is very, very important for the country. Anytime I go for those meetings and I come back, I am supposed to give a report to the National Codex Committee. This is an interministerial committee, but the, but the, but the, the focal point is, uh, is based at the Ghana Standards Authority. You will have to make a presentation before the National Codex Committee and then tell them to their satisfaction the benefits that Ghana as a country derived from the participation in a particular meeting. We are supposed to be going for all the sessions, but sometimes due to financial constraints, we are not able to participate. That's how you see that I participated at the 17th, 18th, 20th, and then 21st. Thank you. Now, with regards to the political discussions, Truly, uh, I must be frank with you, I enjoy political discussions because I used to take part in them myself on radio. And I think there shouldn't be any limitation at all. What we should rather do is to let people understand that when you are on radio or before the cameras, you are talking not just to yourself. You are talking to the whole nation. And when you are talking to the nation, what is your aim? Your aim is to bring about mutual understanding, to let people be able to coexist, whilst at the same time putting your point across above your opponent's point. That is the whole idea about it. All these discussions we are having on radio and then on TV are supposed to ensure that we have accelerated socioeconomic development. So the only thing we can do is to call upon discussants that they should be aware the kind of language they use on radio. But in no way should we as a country ever attempt to put any limitation on them on the radio. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, before I call on the next honorable member to ask a question, in your answer to the earlier question that Honorable Agwesi asked, you said that upon your return from these conferences, you're supposed to present a paper to a certain body. Do you indeed comply? Mr. Chairman, I'm glad to inform you that I have always complied and on time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, Honorable. Yes. There, there is somebody sitting here 
who used to be or still is the chairperson of the national. But he cannot answer. No, but he can't answer. He has nodded his head. So I'm sure that it's true that, it's true he, that the he has. Is the nominee is taking the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Chairman, the nominee is going to the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation. Now, I know as a principal that that ministry is always talking about how the environment is polluted and what can be done about it. So we have in that ministry the polluter pays principle. Very close to it is the way plastic waste, you know, have become a menace to all of us. Um, do you have any views on whether to ban plastic products and resort to only paper? And if you have, you can share it with us. If you don't have, you may say, you well, we should share with your minister later on. <laughs> <clears throat> now, you talked extensively about codex and your representation up, out there. Have you, as a national committee, made any inputs on the quality of food that we eat, particularly food that is served on a daily basis in Ghana? These are my two questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will take the first one on the issue of the environment and specifically the case of the plastic waste. If my minister were to ask me on this issue, what I would say is that we should rather up our education on how to safely dispose of plastics. Why? The reason being that we are still a developing, in fact, well, we are still a developing country, let me put it that way, even though we have not entered the lower part of the middle income status. But if you take the specific case of water, for instance, many people are still not able to buy the bottled water. So many people still depend on the sachet water. And of course, you cannot package sachet water in paper. It's not possible. So it is still a reality that we need to use water. And indeed, if you go by the advice of doctors that you should drink as much water as you can, in a day, and a citizen is supposed to take about, say, on the average, five such uh, water in a day, and then you tell him that he should rather go and buy bottled water because you are thinking of the environment, it may be a problem. So in as much as this case is with us, I would rather advise my minister that we up our education on how to handle the plastic waste. Public education here is the key. I'm fully aware that in other countries like Rwanda, they have banned the use of plastics. I remember when I wanted to go to Rwanda for a program, one of the preconditions for the visa was that you shouldn't bring anything in plastic to Rwanda. We could do that, but then we'll have a social problem for a while. So we have to weigh the options. But I, as a person, would advise that let's do some more education and place more beans, advantage places, particularly in our markets on the streets, and let people know that when you finish drinking your water, put the plastic uh, bag here. When you go to the shop and then you buy produce, it's not every time that you should let them put the produce in a plastic bag for you. You can recycle your own bag. You, if you have a material bag, you can always go to the shop with it. So this is the kind of education that I think we should do. Banning is the easiest to do, but it will, it will bring problems on, on the way for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, it's clear from the nominee's CV that uh, he's a very distinguished scientist and a very hardworking Ghanaian. Uh, no wonder uh, his chief executive, Dr. Stephen Opuni, is giving him full moral support uh, in the background. Mr. Chairman, I have two questions. The first one has to do with environmental concerns by civil society organizations about uh, the way our natural resources are, are mined. 
they are of the view that the EPA is a bit relaxed and not too, um, if you like, um, uh, strict in enforcing and monitoring and making sure that uh, our communities are protected from uh, the environmental degradation that, that, that takes place due to these mining activities. I would like to know what you intend to do to assist your minister to strengthen the EPA and address this concern of, uh, of civil society organizations. Uh, reading on you, I noticed that your approach, uh, you recently delivered a paper where you said that uh, inspectors should not uh, roam about with a big stick to kill industries. So it appears to me that you are more of the laissez-faire, you know, try to be in the middle and take the view of uh, protecting industry at the same time, making sure inspectors are doing their work so that uh, industry is not affected. Uh, that's my understanding of this paper you delivered. But I would like to know how you intend to uh, strengthen the EPA. My second question has to do with the social interventions in your ministry, if we give you the nod, the Mass and Science Scholarship Program, and then the Better Ghana ICT program, which rolls out computers for students and other peoples in, in school. The concern has been that it's not too clear to the ordinary Ghanaian. If I want a computer as a student, where do I go to? Uh, who do I contact? Um, if, I, if I live outside the region, wh which office do I go to and all of that? How do you intend to assist the minister to make some of these programs more accessible, more transparent, so that uh, the good people of this country can benefit from these interventions in your ministry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think with regards to these interventions, um, the first thing I would do if I get a note from this committee is to advise my minister that we need, for instance, to review this ICT program that we are undertaking, uh, the distribution of the computers. Um, the reason being that I, I, I think that at the level of the tertiary education, of course, we can continue giving individuals. But at the pre-tertiary education level, I think we should rather strengthen the schools, uh, set up computer laboratories, computer libraries for the students to go in and use. Uh, there are several reasons for this. Um, first of all, just as schools will not allow students in the pre-tertiary level to use mobile phones, and we all know the reasons why, for the same reason, we should be careful distributing uh, computers, uh, laptops to people who have not reached the university level. We should rather strengthen the institutions and I'm uh, fully aware that the ministry is already thinking along these lines, and I'll give it my fullest uh, support. Now, concerning the mass uh, science technology scholarship uh, scheme, um, I, want, uh, I would advise uh, that uh, truly we should let it be for the needy. Uh, because when I looked at the figures, I, I, I realized that the sums may not be adequate to qualify as a scholarship. I would rather have called it a bursary. But if we truly want it to be a scholarship, uh, we should look for those who are truly needy and let them have something substantial uh, that can let them pursue their career in the sciences and then in, in mass. That's the kind of advice that I would give to my minister in support of these uh, uh, pro programs. Yes. Yes. Uh, with regards to pollution, but an area I'm rather more concerned about is offshore pollution, the possible offshore pollution. We have just started as an oil producing country, and we have to have in place a mechanism that can allow us to adequately handle any contingency, any emergency. So I would rather propose to my minister the setting up of something like a national oil contingency plan, I mean the, the formulation of a national oil contingency plan, 
with the ministry through EPA being at the center and collaborating closely, very, very closely with the Ghana Navy and then the Maritime Authority. And as you all know, once we are producing oil, ships will come here to load oil and they can pollute our water through two sources, either through the, this, the, the diesel containers, if there's a problem, they can uh, pollute our waters, or even the oil itself that they are carrying, if there's a problem, they can also be a spill on, in our water. So we have to be careful about that. And for that matter, I think it is as a matter of agency, I don't know whether it is there. If it is not there, it is something that I'm going to advise my minister on, that we need to have a national oil contingency plan with the ministry through the EPA, where the EPA is under the ministry, being at the center and then having close relationship with the maritime authorities and the Ghana Navy. We need, of course, to strengthen the arm of the EPA in terms of equipment, vehicles, so that they can be mobile and move wherever they want, and then some amount of training. This is the minimum we can do for them so that they can be in a better position to handle issues of pollution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you very much. Um, I will nominate, before discharging you, I want to find out from you how best you would be able to assist your minister to look at this area of research work taking place seriously, but it not being translated to areas of our economy for us to benefit from. Of course, in the area of agri, there seems to be a lot of you know, work going on. The Ministry of Agri is benefiting. But when you go to industry, for example, other areas, so much research work is done, but uh, the benefit does not uh, come to the country. What do, you, what do you take of that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am, I'm actually very happy that you mentioned that in the area of agri, some results are being seen in terms of application to our everyday life. Uh, in terms of the development of the new varieties of several crops which our farmers are using and increasing productivity for all of us. Yes, I think we need to create a common platform where industry, research, finance, and then government can always interact constantly. And this platform is what is known internationally as the Science and Technology Pacts. I'm fully aware that in the manifesto of the NDC, the, 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 there is this idea to create search packs in the central and then in the uh, eastern region. I am also aware that the ministry is actually encouraging uh, the University of Science and Technology to, to, to go on with their idea of setting up a science and technology pack. Uh, these packs are most productive when they are near research institutions and then near universities. That is why I think much more focus should be placed on the one that is being perceived by the University of Science and Technology as well. Uh, in short, using the science and technology packs, we can solve a lot of the teaching problems for the development of science and technology in the country. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Nominee. Before we discharge you, we have some names here we want to acknowledge. We have Hakima Sali Salma, the wife of the nominee. Is she here with us? With whom the man is performing 100%. <laughs> now, Alhaji Malik Isahaku, regional chairman. Yes. We also have uh, Eric Dakuma, the re Dakura, sorry. Regional Secretary, we have Alaji Seidu Jama Kutu, uh, Jama Tutu, yeah. War Central Chairman. Yeah. We have, may I give it to yeah. Honorable? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> I'll continue from where the Chairman left. And Alaji Mustafa is a senior member of the party, Yahaya Yakubu. Deputy Regional Youth Organizer, uh, Abu, Kari, Abu Bakari Mutiu Rahman, Regional Youth Organizer. Constituencies which are present, I will start with mine first. <laughs> Wild West constituency representatives, then Wild Central constituency representatives, 
Sisala East constituency representatives, Jirapa constituency representatives, Lambusie Kane constituency representatives, Y East constituency representatives, and a number of businessmen and women, chiefs, and uh, his former or his former his yet to be former boss, Dr. Opuni, chief of FDA, is also around. The rest of you, all of you, I know you. I can acknowledge all of you because the chairman doesn't know you. That's why he didn't write your name. So I acknowledge all of you for the solidarity to our brother. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I think my chief director is also here from the ministry. Oh, with sorry, some sorry. Other directors. Yes. Because the Kodesh chairman, that, he was nodding. So because I said it, I thought I, I recognize him. Uh, Dr. Sylvester Hanimana is here to give support to him. the chief director for Minister of Environment, Science, and Technology and Innovation. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much. Honorable nominee, thank you for attending upon this committee. You are discharged. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can we have the next nominee before we go on break, quickly?